The next part of this chapter is all about solutions. You guys know a little bit about solutions. Uh, some people confuse suspensions or colloids for solutions. They're not solutions. They're heterogeneous mixtures of two or more substances. So like orange juice or milk or Italian dressing, those are not solutions. They're suspensions or colloids. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances like sugar in water. Some sort of powder in water usually works. Where sand does not dissolve in water, therefore it's a heterogeneous mixture. Solutions are made up of the solvent and the solute. The solute is the substance that's less plentiful in the solution. Saturated solution, when the solvent has dissolved the maximum amount of solute possible at a certain temperature and some solid remains at the bottom, down here, undissolved. That's a saturated solution. This reaches some sort of equilibrium where some of the solute is coming out and forming a solid. Some of it dissolves and goes into solution. There's different types of solutions. There's liquid-liquid solutions. This is methanol and water. Methanol has a nonpolar end and a polar end, and it also has hydrogen bonding, so it can dissolve in water. These two liquids are called miscible liquids, which means they can mix. However, hexanol and water, hexanol has a huge nonpolar portion to it. So this is nonpolar, this is polar, and the one thing you need to learn from solutions is like always dissolves like. Polar dissolves polar, nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. So these are immiscible liquids, not miscible. However, hexane and hexanol are miscible because they have a lot in common. A lot nonpolar and a huge nonpolar section right here. There's solid liquid solutions, usually an ionic compound dissolved in polar water would make a solution. Polar solids such as glucose dissolved in polar solvents. Nonpolar solids should be dissolved in nonpolar solvents. You can have gas in liquids just uh, for example you put carbon dioxide gas in carbonated beverages. You can have gas gas solutions. Air is a solution. The solvent would be nitrogen gas. You can have gas solid solutions. You can have gas trapped inside solids. You can have solid-solid solutions. Steel is a mixture, uh, or a solution, if you will, of two different solids. Brass. We made brass pennies. That's a solution of two metals. There's four different ways that we are going to be using concentration as far as solutions are concerned. There's molarity, which you already know, molality, mass percent, and mole fraction. We talked a little bit about mole fraction already the moles of a substance divided by the total moles. Mass percent is the mass of a certain component divided by the total mass of the solution. Molality is the moles of solute per kilograms of solvent. And molarity, you know, is moles of solutes per liters of solution. Now, molarity can change with temperature, okay, because some solutions can expand or contract. The rest do not change with temperature. So molarity, a 3.75 gram sample of salt is dissolved in water. The total volume of the solution is 768 milliliters. What's the molarity? Well, first of all, I'm going to convert grams to moles. Then I'm going to divide it by my total volume of solution, of course, in liters. And I get 8.36 times 10 to the negative second molarity. How many milliliters of 0.245 molar sodium hydroxide are needed to deliver 1.75 moles of sodium hydroxide? Well, I have moles, and I have my molarity, so I can solve for liters. Once I have liters, I can convert to milliliters, 7,140 milliliters. So what if I'm doing molality? Remember, molality is moles of solute per kilograms of solvent. So I'm going to take the 4.77 grams and convert that to moles. But then, remember that the density of water is 1. So if I have 320 milliliters of water, I have 320 grams of water, which is 0.32 kilograms of water. So I take the moles divided by my kilograms of water and I get 0.35 molality. That small m right there means molality. Find the molality of a 3.7 molar solution of NaCl that has a density of 1.12 grams per milliliter. Well, if I don't give you any information, start making stuff up. For example, let's just use one liter because that's a simple number. Well, according to this, right here, one liter is 3.7 moles. 
moles to grams, now I have 216 grams of salt in one liter of this solution. Find the mass of this solution. Well, I've got the density of the solution, I've got the volume of the solution. Here, 1.12, that's 1.12 grams per milliliter. That gives me the mass of the solution. Now I've got my mass of my solute, the mass of my sol solution. If I subtract them, that's going to be the mass of my solvent, which is 900. Okay? So now I can find my molality by doing moles divided by kilograms of solvent, 4.1 molality. The density of a solution that is 12.4 mass percent uh, is 1.17 grams per milliliter. Find the molarity. Okay. So once again, I don't have any numbers really to play with, so I'm going to start making up a solution. Let's say I have 100 grams of this solution. Well, then that means that 12.4 grams of this solution are hydrochloric acid because it's 12.4 mass percent. And hydrochloric acid to moles is 0 0.340 moles. If I subtract these two right here, I'll figure out my mole or my grams of solvent. 100 grams of solution, of course, here's my grams to milliliters. That's using the density right there, convert to liters, 0 0.0855 liters. Take my moles, divided by my liters, and I get 3.98 molarity. Find the, excuse me, find the mole fraction of a 1.5 molality solution of potassium hydroxide. Uh, the first thing I need to do is find the moles of potassium hydroxide and water. So once again, if I don't have any numbers, make numbers up. Doesn't that mean I have 1.5 moles of KOH for every one kilogram of water? So if I have moles of KOH, I can convert that to grams. If I have one kilogram of water, I can convert that to moles. Actually, I don't want to convert this to moles because I want mole fraction. So I've got 1.5 moles KOH, 56 moles of water. That's a total of 57.5 moles altogether. If I want the mole fraction of potassium hydroxide, I take this divided by the total, which is 0.026. If I wanted it for water, I'd take 1 minus 0 0.026, 0.974. Just remember that like always dissolves like, polar dissolves polar, nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. Uh, some chemicals are soluble in water. And if you'll remember, we did a whole unit on solubility called KSP. Okay? Adding heat tends to normally increase the solubility. So as the temperature goes up, the solubility also goes up. Fractional crystallization has to do with this. If you're given a mixture that contains 80 grams of K2SO4 and 80 grams of potassium nitrate and you're asked to produce as much pure KNO3 as possible, how would you go about doing it? Well, here's K2SO4 and here's KNO3. So what I would probably do is take something like uh, 100 grams of water and raise it to 80 degrees Celsius. So 100 grams of water at 80 degrees Celsius. Well, at this temperature, 100 grams of water can only hold roughly 170 grams of K2SO4 and about 100 grams of KNO3. Okay, so 170 grams K2SO4, 100 grams of KNO3. Everything dissolves. Then if I cool the solution down to zero, what happens? The water's still holding almost all of the K2SO4, but not holding almost any of the KNO3. So at zero degrees, 150 grams of K2SO4 is soluble in 100 grams of water. We only dissolved 80 grams of K2SO4, so none of it has precipitated out. KNO3, on the other hand, at zero degrees Celsius can only hold 12 grams of KNO3, uh, and so we have 100 grams of water. We dissolved 80 grams of potassium nitrate, so we accomplished 68 grams of KNO3, which isn't that bad. All right, finally, supersaturated solutions, okay? If you see this saturation line right here like we had on that other curve, if you're right on the line, that's called a saturated solution. If you're above the line, that's a supersaturated solution. If you're below the line, that's an unsaturated solution. If you take a solution that's saturated, which has some extra solute, undissolved, and you heat it up, it will dissolve. Once you heat it up, now it's holding more than the maximum amount, but then when you cool it down, 
that's a, a super saturated solution. And all it takes is one little seed crystal. If you just add one little seed crystal, then it will knock all that extra solute out of solution and turn back into a solid. So how do you make a super saturated solution? Start with a saturated solution. Then heat it up. When you heat it up, it can hold more. Okay, keep heating it up, keep heating it up. All right, now you're holding more than you normally should. Then cool it down. Once you cool it down, now we're way up here. Now this solution is holding a lot more than it should. It should actually only be holding this right here. Okay, so now it's super saturated. Now if you simply add a little seed crystal to it, it'll drop back down to a plain saturated solution.